Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Bug Night Ride Limited Q2 FI24 earnings conference call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Viral Shah from IIFL Securities. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Shah. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Pug Night Rides 2Q and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. Today, we have with us Mr. Malik Mehta, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, Director, Finance and Group CFO, and Mr. Somshekar Nanda, CFO of Deepak Nitrite Limited. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management team, followed by an interactive Q&A session. To begin with, Mr. Malik Mehta will share views on the operating performance and the growth plans of the company, followed by Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, who shall take us through the financial and segmental performance. The results documents have been shared with you earlier and have also been posted on the company's web website. I now invite Mr. Mehta to share his opening comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to all of you on Deepak Nightlight's Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. First of all, I want to wish everybody a very, very happy Diwali and a wonderful, prosperous New Year for not just you, but your family and friends as well. Our results documents were shared with you earlier, and I hope you've had an opportunity to glance through them. I'll initiate by briefly taking you through the key financial and operational highlights through the quarter and half year. Mr. Bhagai will then present you with a more comprehensive financial overview during the period under review. And following that, we would love to hear your questions. In the first half of this financial year, the global chemical industry faced significant hurdles. Concerns have been about destocking by Chinese enterprises, uncharacteristic weakness in the Eurozone, and a transient reduction in discretionary income and expenditure, owing to a hike in interest rates to calm inflation in major economies. Despite these challenges, our business demonstrated resilience due to various factors like cost leadership initiatives, changes in product mix and geographies, and strategizing procurement of certain key raw materials where possible. In addition to skillfully overcoming challenges, we have progressed on key strategic initiatives, including growth capexes, which will cater towards bringing in upstream as well as downstream products. These projects have the capability of being both top-line and margin aggressive. In the current scenario, DNL has experienced a decrease in revenue due to the transient reduction in realizations. In Q2 FY24, consolidated revenues were 1,795 crores, lower by 9% year-on-year, and flat on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Sequentially, we witnessed consistent performance in the face of a challenging operating environment. This was primarily due to a strong growth overall in the phenolic segment and a steady demand for advanced intermediate products. We have also observed a quarter-on-quarter -quarter normalizing trend with regards to volumes, particularly in products geared towards specific end-user sectors like glass, paper, home care, and more. We anticipate a normalized performance starting from Q4. While key export markets are grappling to demand pressures due to the global situation, the good news is that domestic consumption and demand remain largely intact. Our strategy remains focused on products and geographies that enjoy stable to positive demand. Nevertheless, our market presence has remained steady across all product lines and geographies thanks to enduring relationships with customers and the perseverance of our teams to maintain operational excellence. Hence, in all cases we have retained and in a few cases grown our volunteers. 
However, in terms of profitability, EBITDA has been impacted by input costs and a migration to relatively non-native markets for some of our products which earlier had a home in geographies such as the US zone. In Q2 FY24, EBITDA was 319 crores, up 52% quarter on quarter, translating into an EBITDA margin of 18%. Our EBITDA grew quarter on quarter, attributed to an uptick in phenol production driven by an increased demand and optimized capacity utilization. Additionally, cost savings on raw materials, operational improvements have all enhanced profitability by their own little bits. All of this while maintaining healthy margins. Consequently, PBT and PAT for the quarter grew by 37%. Thus, our primary focus continues to remain on enhancing productivity through our dedicated efforts and maintaining and growing our relationships with key customers and as well as ensuring that our products find a good home even if there is a migration in geographies in some cases. On the operational front, our domestic business generated revenues of 1,437 crores, while exports were at 341 crores during the quarter. Coming to our segmental performance, in the first half, the AI segment generated revenues of 1,379 crores, lower by 3% on a year-on-year -year basis despite these challenges. Further, during the quarter, we observed a positive uptick in our sales volume compared to the previous quarter. We are actively working on establishing new relationships in both the short and long term with key customers to ensure consistent offtake. Furthermore, we successfully maintained or increased our wallet share, our share in the markets, as I mentioned, in new geographies as well. Deepak Phenolics reported revenues of 2,188 crores in H1 FY24. In Q2 FY24, revenues stood at 1,120, up 5% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, and EBITDA margins improved, by 7, improved to 17% from 10% last quarter. This quarterly improvement in profitability can be attributed to increased volumes, margin improvement, and an improvement in VOC owing to the uh, establishment of the advanced process control systems that we've put in place. We also see that there is a gradual improvement in demand in the Philonic segments. Our sustained high capacity utilization at 136% continues to be a key factor. Notably, our efforts to introduce new downstream products are also now materializing, indicating promising growth prospects. Moving to some interesting updates about our projects. First of all, our asset project is steadily progressing and is, commissioned, uh, is planned to be commissioned as scheduled. Other projects such as photochlorination, fluorination, MIBK, MIBC, hydrogenation, the new research and development center, and brownfield expansions are all progressing well and expected to be commissioned over the next few months. In conclusion, Deepak Nitrite continues to be strategically positioned for comprehensive expansion, continues to increase its integration within its value chain and new value chains. Our investment plans underscore our readiness to capture these opportunities as they come to our home market, and we persistently aim to diversify our project portfolio broaden the customer base and enhance our overall value propositions. We have a firm and robust financial standing, very strong client relationships, and a well-planned growth prospect. We're trying to enhance our business proposition, market share, and shareholder value. We've taken substantial steps to mitigate risks in our business model, ensuring a stable input supply, established captive power, increase the amount of generation of power and steam using sustainable means, and valorization of waste. Our ongoing and upcoming investments reflect our commitment to seizing opportunities in a responsible manner, with an unwavering focus on innovation, customer expansion, and value creation. I'd like to hand this now over to Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, 
will address this forum and take you through the financial performance. Thank you, Molik. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this call today. First of all, let me wish all of you a very happy and healthy festive season. I'll now take you through the highlights of the financial results for quarter and half year ended September 30th. During the period, Tipper Nitride maintained a solid performance despite a challenging operating environment marked by volatile raw material prices and utility costs. Despite these obstacles, the company managed to increase its market share, especially in phenolics, and strengthen its top line across various business segments. Consequently, the operations remain highly capital efficient, resulting in enhanced return on capital employed in uh, uh, the overall ROC is 27% in Q2. Coming to our financial performance on the operating front, domestic business revenue stood at 1,437 crores and 2,869 crores in Q2 and H1, respectively. Export revenues were 341 crores in Q2 and 677 crores in H1. On a consolidated level, domestic to export mix stood at 81 to 19%. And in Deepak Nitride's trend alone, it is remaining at the more or less same level, say around 60, 40, or maybe 55, 45. In H1, FI24, and consolidated basis, revenues were lower at 11% 11, 11 at 3595 crore compared to 4041 crores in H1, FI23. EBITDA stood at 561 crores in H1, FI24 compared to 648 crores in H1, FI23. Margins came at 16% in H1, FI24 against 16% with almost at par with uh, uh, FI23. PBT and PAT at 479 crores and 355 crores, respectively. In Q2 FI24, on a consolidated basis, revenues came at 1795 crores, again almost at par with uh, 1800 crores in Q1 FI24. On Q1 Q basis, EBITDA came in at 319 crores from 242 crores in Q1 FI24. Margins were at 18%. The higher rental costs and other utilities, along with the lower recovery on few, uh, few products, PBT and PAT stood at 277 crores and 205 crores, respectively. Profitability was aligned with the operational performance of the company, which was impacted due to review cleared by the inflationary pressure um, in RM and other utilities. In the ensuing quarter, the circumstances is uh, anticipated to improve in the second half of the year. Moving to segmental customers in an advanced intermediate segment, revenue stood at 670 crores in Q2 FI24, while EBIT stood at 103 crores during the quarter under review. In H1 FI24, revenue came in at 1,379 crores and EBIT came in at 218 crores, translating into a margin of 16% despite the current environment and challenging circumstances. Several segment delivered a increasing performance uh, revenue growth of 5% at 1120 crores uh, in Q2 versus 1068 crores in Q1 FI24, while EBIT stood at 170 crores and EBIT margin came in at 15% in the quarter. In H1 FI24 revenue, D grew by 16% to 1080 crores and EBIT came at 258 crores, translating into, uh, into a margin of 12%. Last year, balance sheet front company's financial position is significantly enhanced and the company continues to maintain zero debt position with a net worth of 4,342 crores on a consolidated basis and 2,765 crores on a standalone basis, thereby strengthening the balance sheet for all future expansions. During the quarter, our community investment in volume subsidy DCTL was around 599 crores of these 100 crores of investment in Q2 FI24. Approved projects are progressing well on and on schedule. Our R&D team is actively developing new products to establish additional specialty chemical facilities. Once the operational, this plant will enhance our sales experience in critical raw materials and boost our profitability. Additionally, we are constructing a state-of-art R&D center near Vadodara. Uh, in, uh, uh, it will come up maybe towards the end of next year. And this will certainly, certainly help in boosting our growth prospects in future, uh, particularly in the finance specialty segment. With that, I would now request moderator to open the forum for question and answer session. 
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Nirav Jamuria from Manual Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so I have two questions. So, first on uh, our standalone business and with respect to three of our. Nirav, sorry to interrupt you. Can you speak a little louder, please? Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes. Yeah. So, if you can share your thoughts on three of our traditional products like sodium nitride, Dasta, and uh, PNT part. In terms of the demand situation in uh, H1 of FI24, in terms of the capacity utilizations which we have clocked, and if you can just walk us through in terms of the situation for H2 of FI24 and uh, the next year, in terms of where we can see the uh, first line of improvement coming. So, could it be DASA? Because what we have seen is last three years uh, after FI20, DASA had been a muted growth. So where can we see the meaningful jumps coming from DASDA? And then you can share your thoughts on nitrate as well as the PNT chain. Nero, Molik will answer this question, but I just want to know why are you calling these products only as a traditional product? <laughs> yeah, because uh, these are the products which generally we come to know in terms of uh, uh, the market understanding because sodium nitrate, we have the leadership position. PNT also and DASDA uh, also had contributed uh, good amount of profitability in FY20. So probably I'm aware of these three major products. There could be others also, but if you can walk us through other products also, that could be also helpful, sir. There are many, but yeah, let Moli answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So first of all, Mira, thanks for the question. Happy day, Mali. But you, uh, I'll take them one at a time. See, uh, DASTA, the largest in application for this is optical brightness, and they go into detergents, textiles, and paper. Now, you're right in saying that the last uh, couple of years have been muted. If you compare it to a uh, high point, that high point also I would consider as noise because it was a one-off. But uh, what I can see today is that while uh, you know Q1, Q2, and even before that has been muted, we are seeing, if you look at a lot of the announcements that are made from paper companies and some detergents companies, about increasing their investments in India, increasing their capacities in India, you will see that the optical brightener industry certainly has bottomed out over the last couple of quarters, and sequentially we'll start to see an uptake. Now, as the only zero-liquid discharge manufacturer and with a market leadership position when it comes to both DASA and optical brighteners, we are primed to be able to take the largest share of this growth as it comes. What has happened over the last uh, year, two years in fact, is that there has been a malaise in the traditional uh, geographies for these products which were in the Eurozone, partially because of water costs, power costs, these things. And you have also noticed that over the last two years, there has been a steady stream of announcements about shutdowns in these, but also correlated to that, increases in investments and the, uh, uh, the bottlenecking in Indian and Asian capacities outside of China. So as these start to get commissioned, we will start to see an increase in volumes. And as we start to see an increase in volumes, it will be followed by an increase in our margins. Now, PNT, the largest home for PNT is Zaza, so they're not directly correlated, but there is a significant correlation. The other segments are uh, more into the dyes and the pigment segments. Now, those have had a uh, you know, uh, depressed couple of years, but there also we believe that the situation by and large has bottomed out. So it is not going to get worse, so to speak. It is going to get better. How fast it gets better is also a very good question. Now, when it comes to sodium nitrite, because it is a so-called intermediate slash commodity product, it has many, many end applications. And certain end applications are doing very well, while certain traditional end applications like dyes and pigments 
have been suffering, especially in places like India. But we, there also we are seeing that there is an expectation of improvement. We continue to remain the market leaders. We will continue to remain the market leaders with the new capacities that we add in Oman as uh, time moves forward. And we are very confident in these industries as well, but also in certain export markets where we have pivoted to in the last quarter or two, where earlier they were relatively unexplored. We have increased our focus on that. It has started off while uh, you know, it factors in our uh, overall export margin uh, markets because we are new into these markets. The margins may not have been as interesting, but as we develop our understanding better and work with the consumers there better, we are strongly under the impression that this will also improve. So, in all these cases, I can tell you that uh, the demand will certainly sequentially improve. The rate of which we will see, but you are seeing also that there are lots of announcements made by other companies, which would be our customers. Correct. So that should give you confidence. Got it, sir. Got it. Uh, sir, second question is, uh, uh, if we see uh, in terms of uh, standalone deeper like, uh, most of the products uh, which we have developed, we have a substantial market share in most of them. And over a period of time, we have either backwardly integrated or forwardly integrated in terms of uh, in terms of the product profile so and this has also helped us in achieving uh, close to 3000 crores of sales uh, in the standard on side so so I just wanted to understand your thoughts that uh, in the standard on business and i'm not i'm excluding the downstream portion of phenol aceton uh, part when can we see uh, such similar blocks coming in terms of let's say uh, three, four products or a block of three, four products putting together or contributing to close to 500 to 1,000 crores of incremental sales. And uh, if you can correlate it, it with the acid plant which we are currently putting on. So could the acid plant also give us an opportunity to develop some of the newer downstream products which can help us to uh, uh, get a meaningful improvement in our standalone sales going forward? So I'll, I'll answer this question now. While we have, have com uh, while we are in process of commissioning our upstream, naturally it is sensible for us to expand our consumption as well, and that is also taking shape in line with our uh, commissioning of the upstream. So you will see that value expression there. Now, with regards to you know the absolute number that you talked about, 500 crore, 1,000 crore, our priority is always on ensuring that we are growing our market share and growing our bottom line. The top line is a factor of the market prices, so it is difficult to comment on that. Uh, I believe that you know, as the demand situation improves, so will uh, the prices. When that happens, you know, it is your guess as well as mine, but we have not only increased uh, the capacity utilization in brownfields, we are also going to be introducing new products which will take advantage of Deepak's existing core capabilities. Now, they may be new value chains, but they have similar process profiles where we have a high degree of competency in. So these are investments that you will see coming into uh, announcement and then into play over the next two years. We've already made certain announcements. We haven't made certain announcements even though we are at a pretty advanced stage because we're waiting just to tie up some of the last bits. But if you're looking at uh, you know, what Deepak Nitride standalone's uh, business profile looks like over the next couple of years, then I don't see any challenge in you know, achieving and crossing the numbers that you were earlier referring to. Got it, sir. And sir, just the last bit of uh, thoughts on the commissioning of the various brownfield expansions which we have been talking about. So, where can we see those capexes coming online over next uh, three to six months? So, what portion of the capexes from the brownfield side would get commissioned over next six months? I think all of them. All the brownfields. All the brownfields will get commissioned over the next six months. 
ओके ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड फेस्टिवल विशेष टू द एंटायर थैंक यू सॉरी 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 हाइड्रोजनेशन ब्राउन फील्ड विल गेट कमीशन ओवर द नेक्स्ट एट मंथ ओके ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड फेस्टिवल विशेष टू द एंटायर टीम ऑफ पीपल थैंक यू एंड सेम टी थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम लैन ऑफ भारत गुप्ता फ्रॉम इंडिया इनसाइड साइड वैल्यू फंड प्लीज गो है थैंक्स फॉर टेकिंग माई क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हैप्पी दिवाली टू एंटायर हैप्पी दिवाली सो कपल ऑफ क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑन द ग्रोथ की पिक्सन सो वी फाइंड द एन यू विद गुजरात गवर्नमेंट रिगार्डिंग द फाइव थाउजेंड करोर इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान सो वे वॉट्स द प्रोग्रेस ऑन इट and if possible can you throw some light with respect to the bifurcation of the kipets across the specialities and all if you do in this and all and probable timelines for the scene so uh, i won't want to break it down into speciality or non speciality because all of these at the end of the day all depend on how you define speciality so you know this whole notion of assuming the speciality margins should be higher i think now we may all accept that this is not always accurate what uh, i can share is that the mou that we signed is for very specific product sets those we are progressing along well on finalizing with regards to the technology suppliers we are also uh, you know clear about where we will be putting what up and we should see these being invested in and commissioned over the next 4 years Right. So this uh, uh, technology, as Monika was mentioning, it's very, it's an advanced stage. We are acquiring land in a very, very soon rather, in a couple of months, or, because that is also the prerequisite of going ahead with this 5,000 crore expansion. So things are in place and moving uh, as per the schedule. Uh, there were some delays in land and lease, but yes, now we are progressing fast. So. Should not be an issue at all. Uh, right, sir. So, sir, if I look like going forward for the next four to five years, it will be a complete transformation journey from being to a extent a commodity play to going venture into a speciality kind of a setup. So, uh, like, just wanted to get a sense, like, what uh, whatever investments which we are making in. So, where does China compete in? and particularly it can be a big threat because a lot of investment will be going in in this particular domain so if this particular de stocking and chinese dumping continues for some more time so can it have a delay on the timelines which we are setting in no no i think you are mixing up to the de stocking of china cannot continue for two three years no i mean and then this is actually frankly if you ask me this is the right time to set up the projects because the world is seeing a very volatile situation today I mean, the LS understand and appreciate one thing that things are very. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult for anybody to comment what will happen in next. Uh, suppose now, if you ask me 25 May, what will happen? I can give you a guess only because nobody knows how Israel war will uh, take place or what is happening on interest. And so, I mean, the guess work can be done by anybody, but nobody can tell you with. Uh, so the point here is, if uh, this, uh, if we are going into the projects now. Uh, we expect and hope things will settle down in next couple of years, and the world will again start. Though other countries, some countries are doing well, many countries are not doing well. So, if things happen as per these the next two three years, if you see there is a revival in the world economy, it is the right time to enter the market also. You know, it is uh, so. I think what we are doing is the right thing to do today, and go ahead with the expansion plans and. You are entering the market, and there is a up cycle. Right. Uh, so, just my uh, basic question was to rely on the fact that the segments which we will we'll be investing in, particularly, so is a China a big player in that particular segment as well? Because so I let, let, let me tell you, see, speciality side. Please understand how we are, what projects we are setting up, and this because it is. making our company much more stronger you know going backward going forward and china may come or europe may come or anybody can come i mean we can't stop anybody coming but the resilience which the model what we are creating if you see that way i mean that is something which will uh, we can sail through any such crisis and any such uh, additional capacity yes there can be 
ups and downs in the business but business remains on a very very strong foundation and fundamentals let's appreciate this you see deepak nitra stand alone you see phenolics also whatever announcements we have made and the way the demand is of phenol is growing and the way we are entering the market and capturing i think that is where let's appreciate that the steps are taken in the right direction if somebody comes if they don't come that's a different uh, question altogether and we are if our base is strong i think we can face any challenges such i just want to clarify this whole concept about de stocking i think that the definition in the market is wrong right de stocking just to be clear means that somebody will try to sell a product regardless of whether they are making a negative margin or not now it doesn't matter what country you are from whether it is india or china nobody wants to sell at a loss the reason that they believe that they are okay with selling at a loss right now is so that they can empty their inventories in order to make new product which will be sold at margins which are better then the products which they currently are holding in inventory that essentially is what destocking means and it also assumes that for whatever reason the market demand right now is slower than it will be in the future so they want to ensure that they are able to get a better part of the better market environment with their higher margin product which they will make freshly and put it in their inventories so destocking is not desirable for anyone regardless of the capacities that are being put up let's be clear about that second point is that the investments that we are making in call it speciality call it semi speciality are with what we call our right to win and when we look at our right to win we compare ourselves against companies that may have actually established plants with fully depreciated business models so we don't make an investment hoping that the market will improve and hoping that this talking will end we look at a situation where we are up against someone who has all of the wherewithal and we are investing fresh money so believe in deepak and believe in the uh, the study that we have put in place and i will not really want to get into whether this is a speciality because what a speciality mean is it about margins is it about uh, you know sku's what is it is it about the length of the relationship with the customers because most of the products that we make even in these segments even if we're talking about polycarbonates they are not going to be done you know with the sense of just putting them all in our department store and hoping someone buys them they will be done with established long term commitments with key customers who will also be putting up investments on their own side to consume the pulse product so i think uh, we should realign with the idea of destocking and speciality chemicals as you know we see it not as per the market hype right uh thanks for the brief amount of overview on the team this is the last bit from my side in terms of the guidance so i think in one of the calls you mentioned that the company will probably look to double the turnover over the next three to four years time frame so currently are we holding upon the same given out the headwinds which the industry is facing And, yeah, you, uh, I see. You mentioned the right word, transformation. We are at a stage here where it's going to be a, a significantly different type of nitrate in next five years' time, four five years, and you can still we are still confident of this. And whatever you said, yes, it's doable. So, thanks, Dasik, from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anika Mittal from Invest Analytics. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, so my question is, uh, there is an update on the ongoing project, specifically the photo halogenation and helix plant anticipated for completion by December 23. Uh, I am interested in understanding the strategic implications of this initiative in light of the evolving situation in China. If China gradually reopening, could you elaborate how the completion of this project aligns with our objective to mitigate the input supply dependency on China? And additionally, uh, considering the changing dynamics, how do we anticipate the manufacturing cost in comparison to import cost? And what is the impact, uh, or what is what is the impact on our profitability? Uh, if you could also quantify the capex uh, allocated to this project, sir. Okay. Uh... 
So first of all, for those particular sets of products, it will completely eliminate our dependency on China uh, on every aspect, even the raw materials. So we will be completely dealers. We will also be uh, the only company in the world with that kind of uh, end-to-end integration. Now, uh, our commissioning is by and large on track, maybe a couple of weeks here or there, but uh, by and large, it remains on track. Now, with regards to what we will do there, it will allow us to manufacture both our, uh, you know, consumed products as well as new products because the assets have been up-engineered to be able to manufacture a much wider variety, which is currently in advanced stages in R&D. And uh, you know, once we establish ourselves with the uh, base, uh, you know, intermediate that we will be consuming, we will also be making these same assets more fungible in campaign manners. I wouldn't want to get into numbers specifically about the capex uh, element here. It, to a certain extent, they have already been clarified earlier, and I think that clarification continues to hold. So no new uh, coloring on that point. But that is, again, on track, and it dovetails very nicely with some of the other commissioning that is going to come online over the next three to six months as well. Thank you, sir. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, and uh, congrats on a very strong comeback on the phenol segment. So first question, uh, in terms of the uh, phenolics margin, so on a sequential basis, uh, how things have improved? Sorry? Hello? Can you hear me? Ruth, your voice is breaking. Can you come in a better reception here, please? Just a minute. Yeah. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, so first question is on the uh, phenolics front. So we have seen a very strong comeback in terms of margin sequentially. And uh, so what is your assessment in terms of uh, the domestic demand, uh, the global demand, and the global inventory situation, uh, have things uh, come back to more or less normalcy? And uh, incrementally, we will see that the performance will be uh, remaining similar for the next uh, foreseeable future. Thank you. So, first of all, last quarter, the uh, the performance was subdued, but we've also given clarity that we ourselves, you know, went into destocking because we anticipated a change in the raw material prices. Also, we had about three weeks of no production in uh, Q1, which affected our EBITDA percentage as well as uh, our uh, absolute. So if you're looking at uh, Q1 as a source of comparison, we had clarified then as well that it was uh, an unusual performance. But uh, by and large, we believe that the downstream segments for phenol, acetone, and IPA remain uh, relatively healthy as we had in Q2. That's what we should be seeing in the next couple of quarters as well. We have, as uh, I mentioned earlier, also completed our advanced process control uh, commissioning, which allows us to operate more efficiently and operate at a higher capacity. Sure, sir. That helps. Uh, so same question again on the phenol segment. So one of the uh, petrochemical players uh, in domestic market, they have announced uh, 300,000 tons of capacity. And uh, in our MOU signed with the Gujarat government, we also plan to go in for uh, maybe a phenol acetone, bisphenol A, and downstream products. Uh, so how do we uh, assess this particular uh, development, uh, given that uh, currently, obviously, we have more than 200,000 tons of uh, imports um, in the country, and the new capacity probably will be able to absorb a significant part of it. So your assessment of the same. Thank you. We assess it by feeling so very confident about the growing consumption of phenol and acetone in India. Right, sir. Fair enough. 
God, uh, thank you so much and uh, best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from line of Ankur Perival from Access Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and wishing everyone a very happy Deepavali. Uh, first question on the yeah, first question on the the R and D side. Uh, you know, the new center is coming up in the next financial year, and we already have around 100 plus manpower there. Uh, in terms of your thought uh, and let's say focus areas, uh, given we have been doing R and D in the fine specialty as well as the phenol derivatives, uh, how do you uh, you know allocate the resources there uh, incrementally? So first of all, uh, you know, whenever we're looking at very very large volume. For example, if we were looking at something like polycarbonates, now there we, in our R&D, we work on formulations, but on the main facility, we would prefer to license it with an established uh, and proven player. When we're talking about specialty chemical value additions, where we're looking at things like uh, waste valorization, that's where our R&D comes in. So internally, our R&D is focused on two things. One is new product development, and one is uh, operational excellence. So both of these are given equal uh, and due importance. Internally, in our labs, we don't really discriminate between a specialty and a non-specialty chemical. That said, when we are directly interfacing with a customer to develop or co-develop a molecule for a long-term contract with them, we do assign a special team which works in lockstep with the customer's R&D and technology team. So they collaborate at every stage here so that at the, at the end of the day, there is a great deal of clarity and confidence built even in the development process. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, just a clarification, uh, if I got you correct, you mentioned that the polycarbonate compounding, the formulation part will be outsourced to a specialized third party, not done in-house. No, no. The compounding can be done internally using our own skills and talent. The facility, for example, something which would convert a key raw material, for example, uh, this phenol, into a polycarbonate, that is where we will go with established mature players, where there is the option. I mean, there are multiple different technologies, but we will go sure. with someone who has a proven track record. Sure, sure. That, that, that's helpful. Uh, secondly, on the uh, the standalone side, especially finance specialty, uh, you know, there have been, you know, uh, excess inventory, China led issues, etc. So your thoughts in terms of demand outlook there and uh, how are we seeing the product basket there in terms of new launches? So the product basket with regards to new launches, the, the pipeline is clear. Now, uh, some of them for example, may be what we're considering a specialty, but they may have something like phenol as a raw material, right? And the end application, because it goes through multiple stages, will be a quote-unquote specialty chemical with the characteristics of that, meaning long-term contracts, particular quality and spec, uh, you know, high value add, all of those things, even if the feedstock is phenol. In the meanwhile, when we're looking at... Uh, uh, new products that are being added, they will be added over the next two years. And, and would we say uh, with regards to demand, with regards to demand, there is a selective soft demand in certain parts of the agrochemical space, whereas in other parts the demand is relatively robust. When it comes to home and personal care, the demand is strong. When it comes to niche applications like thermal paper, the demand is weak. Fair enough. And, and will it be fair to say that most of this finance specialty uh, business will be largely contracted? As in, to uh, with time with commitments, maybe short term or long term? Yeah, generally that is a characteristic. It's not always like that, but more often than not, this is the case. They may be annual contracts, they may be multi year contracts, or in a couple of cases, they may be uh, half yearly contracts. Sure, sir. And just last question, if I may. Uh, from a, a China dependence right now in terms of RM sourcing, uh, where are we right now? And post the expansion, where do we expect us to be? We source from China. We will continue to source from China wherever we need. 
but for every single raw material we have uh, sources which exclude china as well so our critical dependency on china is not there i think in any business however it doesn't mean that we will not take the opportunity to buy from them obviously if we are going to be manufacturing the raw material ourselves there's no question about it sure that's helpful thank you and uh, all the best thanks thank you thank you next question is from the line of vivek rajmani from morgan stanley please go ahead um hi sir thank you so much for the presentation and uh, happy diwali to you and the team um if i may um just on the demand point um i think in your opening remarks you mentioned that um you saw a sequential increase in volumes um, across the board uh, in this quarter uh if i just look at the revenue uh line on the advanced intermediates the revenues have obviously uh, come down on a sequential basis uh, which uh, which implies that your asps would have obviously been lower uh my question is do you get a sense that you know the the decline in asps is now maybe stabilizing and maybe you know going into the second half of this year you start to see some pick up there uh, in line with the demand trends that you're seeing uh, that was the first question and just as an extension to that obviously we're in, uh, we're in november uh, for the first month and you know month and 10 days of this uh, new quarter uh do you get a sense that you're seeing an increased pace of green shoots coming through in some of these segments already thank you so much uh just to just to be clear i didn't uh, i didn't say that uh, demand in terms of volume is uh, you know normalized in quarter 2 i said that there is a sequential improvement in the volume demand trajectory in uh, you know that we are seeing as we move towards q3 and q4 so just uh, you know to be clear about that and q2 did have some weak spots of demand and hence we chose strategically to migrate towards other geographies other end applications for some of our products which previously used to be sold in the more mature economies now when it comes to how we are seeing q3 uh this is i think what we should look at is uh, you know over a period of time q3 so far from october until now has largely been occupied by the festival season so october and november every single year not just this one but even in past years should never be reflective of what you would see in the rest of the year just like in china you would never look at a jan end feb as a indicator of the rest of the year because it is largely shut down because of uh, you know its own new year festivals but we are continuing to see uh, you know slight green shoots with regards to stabilization normalization worldwide nonetheless it is premature to assume anything right now um sure sir thank you so much for the clarification and just a second question Uh, obviously on the phenolic side spreads have been very strong this quarter and i think they've continued to hold up pretty well if you could just give a sense of you know the regional uh, demand supply uh, situation i think last quarter there were some shutdowns or so if you could just give a sense of you know how the regional demand supply balance is shaping up into the second half of this year that will also be very helpful thank you so much see we are running phenol plant at 136 135 percent you know that answers your question that there is a demand and we are able to supply people will import because we are not able to meet the full demand that's a different thing but i mean they you have seen how it is uh, second quarter has performed and we are very confident that the second half of the year also will continue the same uh, momentum in phenol as well as deepak nitrite also so yes there is a demand uh, in the sense of discretionary spending and this yes there is a i mean that is going on for quite some time it's not very recent you know when molly told about uh, the textiles and uh, these are all last one one and a half years we are seeing this uh, there is a subdued uh, demand and overall if you see the world economy also there is people are maybe deliberately or maybe because of the external situations you know, the demand is 
uh, gradually slowing. So we expect this to improve, but it may not improve so soon. But our product, we are selling full volumes, not an issue at all. Yes, there could be pressure on uh, the realizations because uh, in this market we are able to sell full volume. But we are not worried about these things. I think we are reaching to the bottom of the cycle and things will uh, go can go up only from here. Sure, sir. So that answers my question. Thank you so much and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from uh, Rohan Gupta from Nuama. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, first question is on our Sinol business. We have seen a sharp improvement in margin. Uh, though I don't think that the spreads have improved so sharply. So it is definitely driven by the better cost management and maybe higher utilization or higher sales. So uh, can you give some sense that how the spreads have improved in, on a Q1Q basis and how much growth in the margin uh, or profitability has come from the better volumes? Uh, also because of uh, the low base of Q1, because we had three weeks of no production. So the base of Q1 was, I would say, uh, unusually low. Hence, it looks like a significant improvement. But by and large, you know, we are seeing that there is a reasonable, uh, you know, what we entered Q2 with and what we are exiting Q2 with and in Q3 way, it has been by and large uh, you know, along a similar track. See, uh, Rohan, this, uh, we have been mentioning again and again that uh, phenol normal margin would be in the range of, say, 15 to 18 percent. And this is what you are seeing now, and these volumes, these are all here to stay. If it is going below that, around 10, 11 percent, then there is something abnormal in that quarter, maybe because of our shutdown, maybe because of the inventory, suddenly there, there is a volatility in the raw material prices and this. But otherwise, this is the margin one should expect. So I don't, we don't see any uh, abnormality in Q2 and then going forward with an, uh, this will may not continue. Okay. Hello. Uh, sir, over. Yes, sir, I can hear. Sir, our capacity utilization for the phenol plant is still stood at roughly 136% at, uh, in a, uh, at one. So, uh, uh, with the, uh, with the commissioning of uh, advanced process control. Uh, it is not H1, uh, it is Q2 because H, uh, quarter one, we had a shutdown. We, right. we also had, we also had a brief shutdown in quarter two when we did the hookup. So, 136, as you see, is the capacity utilization. It is not the capacity, the updated capacity. So we will be in a position to be able to cater even more to the demand in India and wherever it is. Uh, so I don't think, you know, you look at 136 as the absolute ceiling. We have the capability to ensure that we are able to supply to the growing market as well. Sir, yeah, you see, that was my exact question that with the advanced process control and with that, which has helped us in a debottlenecking, uh, the, should we expect in H2, the utilization level, I mean, on an increased capacity, uh, uh, can go up by another 15% from here in terms of volume, additional volume? Uh, I, let's not put this in uh, terms of percentage, but yes, it can go up because there is a demand in the market. And we are, our team is quite capable of delivering more. So there is no issue as such on that. And the APC uh, did not factor in Q2 at all, other than unfortunately necessitating, uh, you know, a very short shutdown for hookup. So it actually affected negatively in Q2. And the benefits of that in terms of plant availability will be seen, you know, now onwards. So recently, we have seen that the crude has gone up, and uh, which is likely to have some impact on them. See, by and large, market absorbs. You see, crude volatility has remained. You know, I, uh, so market absorbs these ups and downs. So, and, oh, yes, I, uh, Rohan, I think between when you started that question and now, crude has probably gone in a different direction. <laughs> so, it, I think we are more concerned with our ability to. Uh, you know, maintain our appetite, pass it over, and the demand in the market. 
Thank you. So the line for the partners have been dropped. We move on to the next question. Next uh, question is from Abhijit Akela from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Uh, just a couple of uh, clarifications I wanted to seek. So one is um, with regard to the capex in the first half, it's about 310 crores or so. Um, you know, what number should we work with for the full year, uh, please, this year? And maybe if there's a number for next year also, if it's possible to share. See, uh, Abhijit, uh, by and large, now the things are moving to the second, uh, first quarter of next year and first quarter onwards, I would say, rather, because every quarter you will see uh, new capex is coming up. So whatever uh, capex we have spent, let's say around uh, 15 to 1700, this all is getting now uh, not the end, end of our entire year, but Q1, Q2, Q3, that way it's progressing in uh, next year. And it will commission uh, from Q1 onwards. Yeah, except for the fluorination. Uh, except for the fluorination what you are saying, that will be commissioned in Q4. This Q4. Okay, uh, but in terms of the fresh capex on the newer projects, uh, you know, when should we expect a major pickup in spending on that? Will it be this year or next year onwards? Prayesh means are you mentioning to the larger capex of 5,000 or this what we have already said around 2,000, 2,200? Um, yeah, I guess, uh, well, more of the 2,000, 2,200. So, I mean, projects such yeah. as... Uh, Sorry. That, that's what I was mentioning, that you will find this uh, every quarter commissioning of one project from next year onwards. Okay, okay. Uh, fine, sir. Got it. Then uh, there is no government incentive income this quarter in Deepak Sana Lakes. Uh, so just wondering what the reason for that might be and uh, whether we, sh we should expect some you know incentive income going forward. Yeah, of course. It's not going anywhere. Now it depends the government where, you know, the, if they have funds, then they will start distributing it. These are all, uh, I mean, our file is already there, and it can come any day. The processing analysis is all, it may take time, but yes, you can expect this incentive load. In some quarter it will be there, some quarter it may not be there, but it is there, and we have to stay. Fine, sir, I got it. And uh, one last thing is just on uh, advanced intermediate, so... Last quarter, we had pointed to, you know, a normalized margin expectation of about 20 to 22 percent uh, EBITDA margin for advanced intermediates. We are running a little bit uh, below that, but, uh, you know, so how should we think about that for, say, the second half uh, and then beyond next year? See, this year, uh, uh, Abhijit, I think, the, I think Q2 and Q3 will also have this kind of whatever we are uh, achieving today. I most likely from Q4 or next year onward things will change and things will improve. I mean, there is nothing wrong with the demand and thing, but only there is a pressure on pricing uh, because uh, though we are able to sell, but yes, overall things have slowed down. So there, can, there is an impact there. So from next year onward, you will certainly see, of course, we are not doing bad in AI. I mean, it's reasonably good, but if you are expecting still better performance, then you can expect from next quarter, uh, first uh, sorry, April onwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I know that I also put myself out there saying that the normalized EBITDA should be in the range of 20-22%. It, it should And be. it will be. It will be. We are starting to see anyway. It's just that the rate of improvement, uh, sometimes you end up overestimating or underestimating. In this case, maybe I overestimated. But nonetheless, the factors that would go in that direction are all in place. And we are seeing those conversations with our customers. Uh, let's see. In this year, certainly towards the end of the financial year, we should be coming back to those numbers which we were used to. Got it, got it. So, uh, you know, improving trajectory in advanced intermediates and phenolics to remain around these levels or maybe slightly improve in, uh, you know, 3Q and second half. Is that... Uh, yeah. Or yeah, yeah, you are right. Uh, you are right. No, no, no. Phenol, you can expect by and large around this. So uh, I would not look at a quarter-on-quarter quarter improvement on phenol. Volume will increase. Yeah. Percentage will remain 
around this plus one minus one percent kind of thing. Sorry, Tim Prabhya Bajin. We'll take one last question from you. No, that's uh, that's that clarifies all my questions. Thank you so much, Malik and uh, Sanjay. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. All the best. Thank you very much. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all for joining this uh, conference call of Deepak Nitrate. In case any further clarifications are required, our investment uh, relation team under Mr. Nanda will be glad to reply to you all. Wishing all of you a very happy Deepavali, a very happy festive season. Stay fine, stay healthy, stay safe, and please enjoy this time with your loved ones. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great year. Thank you very much. On behalf of IIFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.